so i do hope you have answered from questions 11 to 16 so moving on back to our question paper so it tells us the company employs a network manager one of the manager's tasks is to allocate username and passwords to new staff when staff log on for the first time they are prompted to change their passwords staff are encouraged to set strong passwords give an example of a strong password and you're also supposed to explain so i did tell you all a strong password is a password which has uppercase lowercase special characters and has numbers in them okay and it should also be more than eight characters in length so you put a strong password here just put random letters numbers and special characters and then over here explain what you have put over here so you should say it contains of uppercase lowercase special characters numbers and it should be more than eight characters in length and uh, it should not be something you can guess easily okay typing your name with one two three and exclamation mark and all that is not a good idea it should be something which is very really difficult to guess okay so random letters is always the best okay then staff are also encouraged to protect their passwords identify three precautions staff should take to protect their passwords so they have already created their passwords three precautions they can take to protect their passwords well you can say do not write it down do not tell anyone do not use the same password for all the accounts then for example do not click on the remember option when you type your password in the web browser normally you type your web type your password in the web browser it asks do you want to remember the password do you want to save the password on the web browser so don't ever click on save okay click never okay so if you come into the marking scheme you can see some of the answers that the examiner has accepted okay so uh, moving on to the next question it's a kind of a repeat again okay describe the disk of unauthorized access to stored data can be reduced by setting passwords Describe two other ways of reducing the risk. Okay, so I told you, for example, we can use a firewall. So you can say using a firewall, unauthorized access can be prevented because a firewall checks everything that enters the network and exits the network. Okay, uh, something else that you can do, another method that you can use uh, to prevent unauthorized access is. Uh, we spoke about putting passwords. You can talk about encrypting the data. So you can say when the data is encrypted, it becomes unreadable until the decryption key has been entered. Okay. So uh, once again, a similar type of question is coming. Identify two risks to stored data. Okay. Other than unauthorized access, for each give a different method of reducing the risk. Okay. So. Uh, uh, the uh, two risk to store data other than unauthorized access so uh, so for example one you can speak about is data theft okay somebody can steal the data or you can just speak about hackers you can say risk number one is hacking uh, so your method would be for example encrypt the data okay so even if they got hold of the data they simply would not understand the data risk number two you can speak about accident deletion by mistake to delete your data so a method that you can use if you by mistake to delete your data is using backups to regular backups okay so over here we do have also the marking scheme which the examiner is talking about this is the answer to the first question okay this is the answer to the first question please do go through it and uh, this is the answer to the second question okay which is this one okay please do pause the video and go through these answers okay uh, quickly going through this MCQ question a network manager prevents users accessing certain websites she does this by of course using an internet filter okay I told you a firewall cannot be a firewall only prevents unauthorized access if you do not want people visiting certain websites in the network you can always use what we call a filtering software internet filter okay we did learn about this in chapter number five okay then over here they are asking two reasons for this advice. Sabir has been advised to make a backup of a document folder that is on his PC. Give two reasons for this advice. Okay, so you can say one reason is in case his data is stolen. Another reason is in case his data is deleted due to accidental deletion. Okay, so one decision that Sabir should make when creating a backup is which software to use. Okay, identify three other decisions he should make. So we did discuss some good procedures to follow when creating a backup so for example he should consider the physical location that he's going to save his, he's going to keep his backup in then he should consider the time that he's going to do the backup okay he said it's always very well time then nobody's using the computer when nobody's using the system isn't it so time of the backup should be considered you should also consider how often 
frequency to the backup is you can do it every day once a week once a month once a year frequency of the backup then you should also consider what media he's going to use he's going to use flash drive hard disk external hard disk what is he going to use okay so over here we have the answers okay please do go through the answers pause the video and go through the answers okay answers are there for both the questions then uh, finally one more question from the 2013 paper explain how phishing attacks are carried out so please in detail do give it an email is sent okay with a link to a fake website users are asked to click on this link once they click on this link they are asked to type in their personal information once they type their personal information this information is sent to the hacker and they are redirected to the original website okay so please make sure you put the entire process that happens over here isn't then uh, the next one goes as identify one other risk to the security of personal data and give a method of reducing the risk okay so to your personal data so one risk that you will be facing is for example you can once again talk about accidental deletion or you can talk for example about unauthorized access okay so if you talk for example about accidental deletion you can say do regular backups if you talk about unauthorized access you can say for example use a strong firewall okay so do check out your answers as well from here uh, and then once you are done uh, with this we'll be moving to our next part which is how you can make online payments okay so nowadays payments which happen online is uh, increasing very much so nowadays almost everybody uses a bank card or for example they make transactions from their mobile phone itself okay so online payment systems are becoming so popular these days because almost everybody is now starting to use it okay so when it comes to online payment systems there is something which we call online third party payment processors okay the online third party payment processors basically means another company or another party will take care of your transaction so you basically give that company for example for example a company like paypal you give your credit card details to a company like paypal okay so then when you go to a website for example let's say you go to amazon.com okay and you want to purchase a good but you're not sure how to, you're not sure whether this website is secure whether you can trust it and all that what you can do is you can give your paypal details paypal will take care of the security and make sure that your uh, credit card details and all is not stolen okay that's what you call third party payment processors okay another company will handle the payments for you okay allow users to create an account so that they can send and receive money using email accounts for identification okay so this is one method of one method of doing online payments you can use something which we call third party payment processors another company will be completely handling your payment then there's something which you can use directly you can use your bank card okay you can go to the website you can say you can put your bank details on the website and making the purchase so when you do a purchase where you're giving your credit card details you'll have to first give your card number you'll have to give your expiry date of the card then the name on the card and then there is something which we call cvv number okay so if you turn your card to the behind you will be seeing a three digit number which we call the cvv number okay so if you're making an online purchase and if you select uh, credit card debit card as your payment method they will be asking you these questions okay and then uh, we do also have something called nfc nfc is basically you'll be using an app in your mobile phone okay you'll be opening that app now nfc stands for something which you call near field communication okay so you just open the app okay and then you keep your mobile phone on top of the credit card reader of the person you're purchasing i mean of the supermarket of the company you're purchasing the product from okay so you just keep your mobile phone on top of their credit card reader on top of their mobile phone Phone and then the relevant amount is transferred between both devices but remember both devices have to be very near near field communication okay there is of course a disadvantage which is that if you have opened the app and if your app is open and if you haven't closed it somebody can come very close to you and can actually transfer money from your phone but transfer amount is limited 
but they can actually transfer a certain amount from your phone that is if the app is open okay so you have to always make sure NFC apps are completely closed okay and then also there is one more method that uh, can be used which is using promo codes or gift vouchers okay so if you go online sometimes the company that you want to purchase from they'll be giving you a promo code you can enter this promo code and you might get a discount or you might get the product for free okay so another way of making online payments is using promo codes or gift vouchers then finally a question is coming up an mcq question a customer uses a bank card to pay for goods at a supermarket checkout okay where on the card is the customer's electronic data stored so it will be on a microchip okay if you take a credit card for example if you look at this picture over here this is what you call the microchip on this chip all your data is being stored okay and finally they ask you uh, supermarket customers can pay for their goods using bank cards identify the additional hardware that is needed at the checkout to process their payments so to read the data in a credit card or a debit card you will be requiring a card reader okay so that's a card reader will have to come over here then they ask you to describe two reasons why storing data on a microchip is preferable to storing data on a magnetic strip so they're asking why is this better than this so obviously one answer that you can say is reading data from a microchip is much faster than reading data from a magnetic stripe and something else that you can talk about is magnetic stripes are more prone to damages than microchips okay a small scratch in this and the data becomes unreadable okay do go through the answers in the marking scheme as well okay this is the answer that your marking scheme has given you also once you're done with that please do make sure that uh, you answer these questions okay there's two more for you to answer do answer it and then once you're done with this uh, there's also a quiz for you to answer okay so once you open this uh, quiz uh, you will find the list of questions and these are questions from various past papers okay so it could be a good practice for you to do this paper as well uh, a video will be done on how to answer these questions okay uh, once you have finished your work do remember once you have finished your work uh, what you will be supposed to do for example once you finish this do open this assignment click on view assignment and click on add or create and come to add file and please make sure that you once you have completed this file please make sure you save it and then upload it over here click on upload and once you're done with that click on mark as done the same uh, the same applies for your uh, worksheet as well okay all the best